you mentioned some of the special tympanometry that can be done. So with patulus, you can use the reflex decay mode. Are you or your audiologist having them do like ipsilateral nasal breathing during that test or just breathing normally? Uh, specifically for the patulus test, yes, they breathe normally. We, we have them do it with the mouth open because that's not going to be as stimulating to uh, reflecting any pressure changes into the ear. So that's our baseline. And then mouth closed and then uh, ipsilateral nasal breathing. And that's, if you find it on that, then that's definitely patchless if you can pick it up on that. And that should be more sensitive. Exactly. Yeah, you see, you see clear deflections, pressure changes, and the audiologist is watching to see that they are coincident with the nasal breathing. And you got, do you guys do your station tube dis, like dilatory dysfunction testing with your tympanometry as well? We don't. Uh, it's, it's too unreliable. It's not a physiological challenge. Typically, your eustachian tube is going to open when you swallow and yawn, not necessarily just because you had a sudden pressure change applied to your eardrum. And so this is the reason that those tests have not been predictive of eustachian, of, of real live eustachian tube function. So most of these tympanometers nowadays will be able to do that, but they are, all of the studies have shown them to be unreliable. The only other test which has been shown to be really reliable with a tympanometer is uh, the Bluestone nine-step test, where you serially pressurize or produce negative pressure against the tympanic membrane. You have the patient do series of swallows. So it's a little more laborious. Most places don't do it, but it actually is the one tympanometer test that has correlated with uh, some degree of uh, performance after tympanoplasty, for instance. Okay. Interesting. So that's good to know. So interpret those results with caution, because a lot of our audiologists had, have started kind of, you know, automatically doing the that eustachian tube dysfunction test if they have a patient coming in with, you know, complaints of clogged stuffy ears. Um, and I, I agree with you. The results have been kind of all over the place. So um, so that's that's helpful to, to know. 